where data sciences, you know, kind of marries life sciences. That's my usual pitch. So when I came here and when I was listening to all those uh, speeches and nice citations, especially that of Mr. Sirish Berry, I was inquiring with Mr. Raju. Because, sorry sir, but I have not seen your guru, I have not read your wanderings and ponderings. <laughs> I know, I know. So I was wondering as to what makes this gentleman special. So when um, Mr. Raju showed me a bunch of pictures, you know, a building that you've designed in Attapur, uh, very, very, you know, it is in Attapur in Hyderabad, I know. Um, I, was, I was thinking, you know, this whole analogy of biology meeting technology, uh, this whole analogy of data sciences, marrying life sciences, etc. A friend of mine recently, uh, I think about a couple of months ago, was philosophizing and give me some gyan. He was saying there are only two kinds of people in the world. There are the artists and then there are the scientists. So I was wondering, you know, and I asked Mr. Raju, I said, so where do architects fall? And then I realized it was a stupid question because if you think about it, all of you gentlemen and ladies who, are, who have chosen this brilliant profession, your heart beats for art, your heart beats for art, but your mind obviously has to work with the science that goes, you know, with all the inanimate cement, concrete, the wood and everything else. So I, I chose to defer with my friend, you know, who said there are only two kinds of people, artists and scientists. I think there is a third kind, that is the architect where the art meets the science. I think that's what you guys define. And you guys have to pay me for that, by the way. You guys have to pay me. IIA has to pay me for saying that. Um, before I, you know, kind of say a few words about my city, my state, and, you know, in terms of architecture, what do we have to offer for you, gentlemen and ladies? Let me quickly, you know, since uh, many of you are from outside of the state, let me quickly also bring you up to speed on what's going on in the newest, the youngest state of India, that is Telangana. This state, Telangana, was formed exactly eight years ago, in June 2014. Uh, it was formed amidst a lot of apprehension, amidst a lot of doubts, amidst a lot of uh, genuine concern, in fact, if I may add, about what would happen to the city, what would happen to the ethos, the culture, you know, the social fabric. Would this government be discriminatory? Would this government actually, you know, work in the lines of, you know, parochialism, et cetera, et cetera. But let me share with you, you know, in the initial days, I used to have a tough time selling my state, telling people, you know, that I represent Telangana. Because Telangana is a name that doesn't easily roll, uh, you know, off your tongue. But uh, today, after eight years, I can tell you with a lot of pride, with a lot of happiness, the state has done exceedingly well, and we continue to grow and continue to grow at a very, very good pace. And in spite, and this is all despite of COVID, despite of demonetization, despite of a uh, bunch of other things. Telangana as a state, when it was formed, just to give you a few numbers, let me appeal to the scientist side of your brain, you know, to the architects. In 2014, the per capita income of Telangana was about 1,24,000 rupees. Today, seven years later, the per capita income of Telangana has risen to 2,78,000 rupees. A whopping, a whopping 128% plus growth. The GSDP, you know, typically countries are measured on GDP growth, 